Discipleship Quick Overview. Let's look at this circle. It's, it's a very important elements in discipleship. And this is outlined in Matthew and in the Gospels. Basically, Jesus tells us what salvation is, you know, how to be saved, and how to lead other people to Jesus Christ. And it tells us then what is the priority of God's word, which is top priority. And he also taught us how to be connected with God. In fact, the habit of prayer is our connection. And the more we pray and the more connected with him, the, that very prayer and connection leads us to be more surrendered to him, which leads to increased spirit fullness, which will empower everything in our walk with Jesus Christ and with our witness. Being spirit-filled leads us to be more fully redeeming our time. And the more that we redeem our time, it causes us to be more watchful and it causes us not to trust in ourselves and, and also to resist and be alert on the devil and to defend against the wiles of the devil. And the more we are watchful, we notice back again that we are bought at a price. And then we have a new relationship that God is our Father. And then He leads us to want to know more about Him. And, and all this circle just keeps going on and on as we grow deeper in our relationship with God. And you notice all these are interconnected with Christ being at the center. To become a disciple, we must first be saved. But at first, we are born. We are born again and we are saved by the Word of God. We are saved by grace through faith. But it is through hearing the Word of God. But first, Peter 2.23 says, For we are born again, not of corruptible, but of incorruptible, of the Word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. So we, when we hear the gospel message, which is according to the Bible, the death, burial, and resurrection, we are saved. And we have a renewed relationship with God. We, were, we are all born of the family of the devil. But when we are born again, we are born into the family of God. And God is our Father. And one of the first signs we are born again is that we hunger for God's Word. We hunger for God's Word. So it's so important to be Word-fed, especially when you first get saved, because we are so hungry for the Word. And we cannot grow like babies need milk. We need the Word of God. And all of us who have been parents before know that babies, they can get angry and ravenous when they are so hungry. They won't be satisfied until they get the milk. You know, they can even get so red-faced and ravenous, ravenously angry. That picture, the Bible says, is the first evidence of being a newborn in Christ. So once you are saved, you know, you are born again, you will, you will have this sign of being hungry for the Word. But I see so many times that when people are hungry, but they are not properly fed, you know, they won't be able to grow, right? They won't be able to grow. And look, as we read more the Word of God, more and more and being fed by the Word of God, we realize the person behind the Word of God, we start to know God. We are so amazed about the truth of who God is and how much He loves us. We want to be connected with Him you know, have a deeper connection with Him. And the habit of prayer is that connection that we want to talk to God, not just reading and receiving what God is speaking to us. We want to pour our heart to Him and just to tell Him how we are doing and, and tell Him all our troubles and what is making us so joyful today and, and, and just communicating Him and listening to Him and it's like a two-way conversation that we become more and more closer to Him. And as you start being connected to Him, 
and you want to acknowledge him in everything, how much we have it all together and how much we live for ourselves. If we don't watch out, the devil is going to rob us of our investment. And because you love him more and more, and because that's what love does, you want to surrender more and more of yourselves to him. Now you are here. You want to surrender more and more of yourselves to him. And this whole idea of surrendered living is because you are so connected to the Lord and because you are so word fed and you are so appreciated and you know that you are bought with a price and that you know you are saved by him and you know what all he has done for you on that cross that you want to surrender more and more of yourself to him and the more of us that we are surrendered to him the more he can fill us Holy Spirit fills us, the Spirit of Christ. And as more and more we empty ourselves, we are more filled by the Holy Spirit. The more empty we are, the less of me, there is more of Jesus Christ. The less of me, the more overfilling we have of the Holy Spirit. And that is where the power comes from. So every day we die more and more of ourselves, and we and it, Christ lived more and more in us. And we are more conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. We become more like Jesus Christ from glory to glory. And our ministry, our walk becomes closer and more powerful and the more joy and the more peace and more love and the more fruit of the Spirit we have, the more we are surrendered. The opposite is, the absence of the fruit of the Spirit is an evidence of a part of life that we have not surrendered, right? It's like a room that is jam-packed full of stuff. The Lord wants to move in, but He won't move in until you surrender everything. You surrender your right to keep the room so jam-packed with stuff and let Him in. As He fills in, we start changing. And we want to invest more of our life for eternity. But we should also be watchful, right? We should be watchful because the devil is also always out to attack us. As we invest more of our life, we realize that the devil is trying to distract us to keep us from being invested. The devil is also trying to make us feel unsaved. You know, the devil does two things. He wants to distract us from being invested in Jesus Christ and in, and in eternity. He also tries to make us feel unsaved. So it's so important to know the word of God that he's promised to us that once we are saved, we are always saved. There are hundreds of verses that promises that and gives us assurance of salvation and eternal security. So uh, make sure you arm yourself with the sword of the Spirit, which is alive and active and sharper than any two-edged sword and our only offensive weapon to fight against the devil. He tried to make you feel like you're unsaved by tempting you and making you mess up, you know. But no matter how much you messed up, you can always come back to God. No, even if you messed up, you know you're still saved. He tried to tempt you basically through three ways, you know. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. You know, the lust of the flesh is a, most likely a physical lust that he tried to tempt you to fulfill. Or it's a lust of the eyes, you know, how you look, how things look to other people, what you own, your position, how much you have, you know, and, and also uh, the pride of life, you know, the boastfulness that we want to show other people how good we are. This is just the most amazing way that Jesus Christ has shown us this very important truth about being a disciple. We're going to go through each one in more detail in further videos. God bless you and I hope you grow strong and more intimate in your relationship with the Lord and that we submit our lives daily 
and become more and more filled with the Holy Spirit and being transformed with a renewing of our mind that we will know what is God's will. We know His will that is 100% sure as prescribed in the Bible. And as we follow more and more of that will, God will reveal us more of His will so we can walk step by step forward, not looking backward, looking forward. We can run that race. God bless you. Dear beloved brothers and sisters, thank you for watching this video. I hope you are blessed by it. Please also check out my other videos and playlists. The other playlists include Saved by Grace Through Faith, Not of Works, Bible Prophecy, Life Application, Basic Doctrine, and Worship Together. And if you have not been born again and if you do not know for 100% sure that you will be going to heaven when you die, please watch my video How to Have Eternal Life and Go to Heaven. As you know, God has promised us eternal life and that He will come back and take us home. He will protect us. He is our refuge and our buckler, and He is our shepherd. He looks at us with favor and with the loving eyes, always waiting to bless us and make us to become more and more like Jesus Christ. And all these wonderful promises of God's protection and blessing is only for the believer, the child of God. So please watch my video and decide to come to Jesus Christ and believe on His death, burial, and resurrection because He died for you. Make your decision today. Indeed, the Bible says all the promises of God are yes and amen in Christ Jesus. I really love you so much, brothers and sisters. I'll see you all in heaven really soon. Our beautiful bridegroom is surely coming, and we cannot wait to see him in all his beauty in the heavens. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace.